Hi, welcome back, welcome back, have a seat. Today we're gonna be talking about some funny military Reddit stories of experiences that people have had in the past that they decided to share publicly in a Reddit thread. Obviously everybody knows that like, there's tons of things that happen in the military that are funny. It's hard to recall a lot of these things because they happen in the moment and they're just hilarious, but you never write them down, but some people do remember them and they do a good job of reciting some of these things in their head. Life is hard, it's hard being in the military, so humor goes a long way, especially for mental health. Anyway, let's get into some of these stories. So in my National Guard unit, Sergeant First Class Platoon Sergeant was selling his pickup truck, so he put up a flyer in the armory. One of the junior enlist guys, E3 to E4, in his platoon ended up buying the truck from him. Turns out the platoon sergeant did not clean out the truck very well, and the enlisted guy found hard copy pictures of a boudoir photo shoot that the platoon sergeant's wife had done. He put them in a plain envelope and gave them back to the platoon sergeant. <laughs> There's a few mixed reactions to that. I know some guys who'd be like, oh, I'm going to keep this. That's yeah. fun. But like, I can't imagine one dude in my unit off the top of my head who I'd think that about. Most of the time, I'd probably be like, what's this? Ugh. <laughs> so, well, yeah, sometimes... You left this in your truck. I didn't look at it. The first comment I saw on that was that of all the things he could have done, this was probably the nicest, kindest thing he could have possibly done. Imagine the hell everyone would have been in if he did the opposite. Well, first off, you'd get in a lot of trouble, especially the Marine Corps, because everyone had to sign a page 11, which is like the social media policy because of the whole Marines United thing. So definitely not the best idea to distribute things like that if you ever find them. Just return them to the owner and be like, these belong to you. Have a good day. Moving on. One of the best stories I heard was from a nurse in War Games Down Under. Op 4 had to set up a FOB, which stands for Ford Operating Base, with a medical tent for the games. She was in a small medic team set up in this base. Just had to be on hand, just in case they were needed. Since it was middle of nowhere and very temporary, the latrines were just to walk into the surrounding scrub. Okay, so there was no latrines. You just had to walk to a bush and <laughs> the bush. First night, she went out for a squat in the scrub. <laughs> she checked her surroundings and squatted behind a bush. Halfway through her business, the bush moves, and there is a set of white eyes. Big white grin on a heavily camoed face. A very Aussie voice. Ma'am, I was here first, but thanks for the show. She let out a scream and ran back to camp. The picket ran out to check, but the Reese unit was long gone. That can't be real. <laughs> that, that can't, can't be real. possibly be real. Is there nowhere that you can go and like go, go <laughs> that? Well, no, sometimes if you're out at like a fob, there's not a bathroom set up or established yet, especially if it's just temporary. Someone had to have been like, do we dug a ditch over there that's for the women go oh yeah there. true yeah that seems like a normal thing unless you're like no i need a different bush every night i have to mark my territory like a wolf well that's thing. typically so one of the things the marine corps does when you're typically if you go to the field there's gonna be like gender identified latrines, especially for that kind of stuff. So it is unusual. But again, this may not be the American military. Second night, she goes out to the other side of the base to find a better place to go. Double checked her surroundings this time and goes behind a fallen tree trunk. Sure enough, halfway through her business, there's a giggle from under the log. Ma'am, we need to stop meeting like this. She let an expletive rant with a few kicks and punches and runs back to the camp. Once again, Pickett charges out to the area, but the Reese unit has gone. Third night, she refused nope. to go out. She woke up in the morning and there is a wild flower with a ration pack chocolate pinned to her tent zipper with a note. Sorry I missed the show last night. Hope you feel better. The scout had snuck past a world of pain just to be a smart. Okay, I don't know if that's true or not. Sounds a little far-fetched. It sounds a little far-fetched. It seems a little made up to me. Funny nonetheless. <laughs> Here's another one. Camp Taji, 2004, E5. Was in a heated spades game. My buddy and I were headed to the chow hall and did our due diligence to let him know our whereabouts. He requested we bring him back a to-go box. I asked for specifics and got an unnecessarily terse, just give me a to-go box, specialist. Me and my buddy went eight, then before before leaving, got him what he asked for. Handed him his to-go box. His empty, exactly what he asked for, to-go box. So they did that to be Jack. He attempted to drop me, but both his partner and opponents called him out on trying to punish me for getting him exactly what he asked for. I got assigned the bad details for the next two weeks. Still worth it. <laughs> okay. Okay, kind of a smart thing to do, but yeah, I mean, the dude was kind of being a, a jerk about it. He could have just been like, yeah, give me some meat and some carbohydrates. Would have been easy enough, simple, or some vegetables, you know. Here's another one. I found an unopened can of cheese from an old sea ration that was partially buried. 
probably decades old. We were inside the vestibule that extends from M577 Talk, which is like a tactical operation center. My fellow soldiers urged and dared me to open it. I obliged. I punctured a hole in it and a spray of decades old putrid sea ration cheese juice under pressure sprayed me directly in the face, mouth, and my gear. It was an unimaginable, rotten, and utterly nauseating stench. Greasy, horrendous, gag-inducing <laughs> funk. And I was doused with it. Between the gagging and the hardest laughter with a group of people have ever laughed was eye-watering, greasy, ancient cheese juice. I was in the field and did the best I could to clean up, but was never able to get the stench out of my load-bearing vest or jacket. So from then on, my nickname was Sergeant Framunda because I smelt like the cheese from under your nuts. Ballsy move opening a decades old sea ration. That sounds terrible. And I know what That's I smell yucky. like after the field. As a man who has once in a while himself, mainly just when I have the flu or something, but definitely once or twice just not knowing I did. Everybody's pooped themselves at least once. So way back around, say, 2016, I was in A school. And in my class were around 12 naval persons with a side of eight Marines, like a side of peas, but Marines. Right, every day we could get a 20 minute break and majority of the class would go to the snack hall, which was quite literally around the corner. Now keep in mind, young men in A school are just testosterone filled lifting junkies, passing the time in class, shooting the sh just so they can hurry up and go to the gym. The Marines in my class during these breaks would constantly talk about their favorite supplements and they always brought up C4 pre-workout. C4 this, C4 that. So-and-so uses it before PR days. So-and-so uses it in the mornings instead of coffee. What year was this? This is 2016. Who's using C4 in 2016? I mean, I used C4 in 2016 when there wasn't anything else available. If there's nothing else available. Yeah, if there's maybe, nothing else available, that maybe, was- Maybe, but- Yeah, but that was the only time I ever used it, really, was when there was nothing else Excuse available. Uh-huh. So one day, about three months into schooling, we were let go on break to go to the snack hall, which was also quite small, maybe around 10 to 12 feet wide, max. And during break, there was a silence in the room, a room filled with roughly 10 people. And in the middle of the silence, one of the funnier Marines in my class says, time to see what all this C4 talk is all about, and proceeds to type in C4 on the vending machine, buying Cheez-Its. I damn near passed out. Oh my god, Buddy was a little dense. He didn't know they were talking about a couple guys like that in the Marines. There's people like that in every branch. You have a <gasps> bag in your unit, and if you don't think you do, I have bad news for you. <gasps> It's you! Whether you're in the Marines, the Coast Guard, the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, you've got somebody there that's that eats rocks. This story says not deployed, but my father was, and he told me the story of how I was almost never born. Oh, this ought to be good. He's on a range with a tank crew. He was a Cav Scout. I know how much the Army loves their Cav Scouts. That sounds fun. When they call a stop, they're there for several hours, and one of the dudes, let's call him Sergeant First Class, Skippy manages to fall asleep. <laughs> A commander on range walks over to some of the scouts and tells them to perform reconnaissance. My father draws the short straw and is sent out on recon. They take shelter behind one of the targets and begin to ID the vehicles. I have no idea what happened, but Sergeant First Class Skippy woke up in a cold sweat, worried that he fell asleep in the middle of the exercise. He calls out, firing on BMP 50 meters, or whatever the hell, and fires the M2 on top of his tank, right at my dad. Thankfully, he's a horrible shot shot and his shots are 15 feet off before he can walk his shots over a range safety officer runs over the tank leaps the six feet onto it vertically hops onto the turret and instead of taking his time to scream at sergeant first class skippy just smacks him with his helmet so hard that the seat is forced down the three feet back into the turret yes yeah, sergeant first class skippy did not last long after that and retired two weeks later if you negligently discharge a tank and you accidentally shoot in the direction or in vicinity of other friendly troops. You're probably gone. You're probably done. All right, here's the next one. I was a 26-year-old staff sergeant in the 82nd Airborne doing a jump master check prior to a C-130 drop at Fort Liberty in 1974. You got to remember that they had not yet allowed women into combat arms at that time. So I'm checking chest straps and leg straps by running my hands into the prescribed airborne manner, and I happened to look down at a pair of size 4 Cochrans and wondered who the f*** has such small boots. I look up and it's a woman rigger with the most serious face I've ever seen. I look over at a bunch of fellow NCOs laughing at me because I was so f old that I could no longer recognize a female. Well, I gotta be 75 and they can still kiss my 
Not a deployment story per se, but one that always makes me chuckle is when I dumped a couple of 556 five, blanks into our maintenance battalion's S3's dirty desk ashtray when I was a company commander. Wait, hold up. That's some goonerite. Sounds like Sir was a gooner. He was blank maxing. He was blank maxing. No real reason to do it. Other than that, he was a d and he left them on his desk while he was out. I got an irate phone call from the battalion XO that the S3 fell over in his office chair when he put out a cigarette and the gunpowder. Apparently I got wrapped it out by one of the S3 NCOs. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. A company commander went into the S3 and did that. Obviously, this must have been quite a while back because they had ashtrays inside, which means they were smoking cigarettes inside yeah, of the S3. That was, a, that was a different time. Yeah, that was probably like, that sounds like Vietnam era type stuff. But I don't know, or 80s. I was supporting an ODA on a very remote fire base. If you know where MSR Hyena was in Kandahar province. We were at the literal end of that road. We had a cook, a U.S. Army cook, and he was a dirty bird. Never washed his hands. And the natural consequence of this was that the entire ODA and attending support personnel had to fight the most brutal foe of that entire deployment. Giardia Lamblia. They're a fairly prolific subset of the Taliban, primarily active in Duodenum province. <laughs> Okay. Looks what he's like saying everyone. is that everybody was pooping themselves. Because that's a type of bacteria. And the duodenum is a part of your colon. We were CSOPs for two straight weeks. Our existence consisted of an endless march to and from the porta shitters, often with IV bags taped to our arms, pooping our brains out dozens of times a day. This battle was won but at great cost. Our previously sick gains were the casualties of this microscopic war, and we had a new problem, getting rid of PFC Dirty Bird. We tried to send him back to Camp Brown on Kandahar Airfield, but it turned out he had been sent to us specifically to get him away from there. This, see, this is a real problem. It's like you, you, you run into a dude who's just like a problem child or a person or whatever. They always try to like push it off onto somebody else rather than making that person better. And then it becomes somebody else's problem. And then they're like, well, this wasn't our problem. Why Why do we need to like fix this dude? Something similar to that happened when I was in MCT when I got VGE and I was just, I think I counted, I threw up like 24 times and had the runs like 14 times while I was waiting outside of the medical tent there to get an IV. And then the whole water bowl got infected and then you'd wake up to kids projectile vomiting in the squad bay. That was fun. Yeah, I don't remember what illness I had when I was in Iraq, but it was, uh, some of the food got contaminated at one of the defects that I was eating at on a regular basis. And there was like, I think like over a hundred cases of people reporting to the, the roll two that were having severe intestinal distress. I'll never forget. Like I came back from eating taco Tuesday. I came back to where I was like staying on the camp I was at and immediately went behind the showers area and yacked my brains out all over the ground. And then I was like, huh, that was weird. That's the only time I puked the entire time was that how, one time how? I puked that one time. And from that point on, I was just like absolutely pooping my brains out for three days before I finally was able to like keep some solid. Anyway, back to the story. That's when I heard those words. No brand new buck sergeant wants to hear. Hey, big Sarge. Being a newly minted NCO, I was clearly in need of leadership experience, but in a unit composed almost entirely of NCOs, I had nobody to lead. I was the most junior man out there. The most junior save for PFC Dirty Bird. He became my my responsibility. I had to supervise him whenever he was in the kitchen can, teach him what little wisdom I had and generally keep him out of trouble. To his credit, he shaped up quick and stayed that way. He taught me quite a bit of about cooking. I taught him quite a bit about field sanitation, apart from getting an up an hour before anyone else out wasn't half bad. I also had the keys to the kitchen can, which gave me an air-conditioned place to go when I needed to get away from my roommate. I had received a Dear John email about a month into the deployment, but my roommate was still very loudly and uncomfortably in Involved with his girl back home. Naturally, I wanted to find somewhere else to be when he had special Skype time. Special Skype time. That's that weird. sounds gross. Spe and that somewhere else was the kitchen. I'd hear the beep bop of the call connecting, grab my Kindle, and go post up in this my sanctum sanctorum for half an hour or so while I waited for him to signal that it was safe again. On this particular night, I had a camp worker with me. Hamid was trying to learn English so he could move to the U.S. and we'd give him books to read so he could work on it. I didn't know any Pashto, but we both spoke Arabic so I could help him with any words he didn't understand. He did end up in the States. By the way, he lives in LA now. Good for him. We were reading about the exploits of Jack Ryan and Harry Potter, respectively, when we heard a slight crunching of the pea gravel outside. One of the fob dogs walked into view, pooping on the ground, and went about his evening. Not my problem, not Hamid's problem. 
Back to the books. A few pages later, we heard a much louder crunch, and that's when the story gets promptly strange. Our senior medic was walking across the field of view, <laughs> tickets in hand, toward the Porter Johns. What he means by that is probably baby wipes. Upon noticing the pile of puppy poo in his path, he stopped. He regarded it for a moment, then set his toilet paper down, dropped his shorts, carefully aimed his Bombay over the target, and released a payload of chocolate soft serve right on top of the dog's turds. He then stood up halfway, pointed and giggled at his handiwork, and walked the rest of the way to the Porter John with his ranger panties about his knees. He thought, hey, there's poop on the ground. Here's my signal to also poop on the ground as well as a grown man. That's that, funny. That's, that is objectively hilarious, but it's like, what the hell? You might not believe this happened. Neither did I. To be honest with you, one of the most elite medical professionals known to man, a sergeant first class, a green beret, just got into a pooping contest with a four-year-old puppy, one handily, and giggled like a schoolgirl. I looked over to Hamid, jaw agape, wordlessly asking him to verify that this indeed had just happened. I will remember his response to my dying day. Without even looking up from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, he simply said, don't look at me, I just make the coffee, and then went right back to reading like nothing happened. At the morning meeting the next day, the senior medic looked at me from across the room with a smug grin on his face and said, I know what you saw, but nobody will ever believe you. And with that, my secrecy was bought and paid for. That was the strangest and funniest thing I have ever seen downrange. He's like, I know that dude in there is watching. I'm going to do this anyway just to mess with him. But now you can't do that because everyone's got a phone. Oh, yeah. People are going to definitely record you. I would record you. you immediately. So, for example, in 29 Palms, California, and I'm sure a lot of Marines out there are going to know this story. There used to be a person that they referred to only as the Ooh. Phantom Pooper. Anyway, the Phantom Pooper was going around 29 Palms for a period of time and dropping loads on the ground around the camp. And nobody knew who it was. And I still to this day have no idea. We genuinely had actual conversations about this in the squad bay from leadership who were like, listen, I'm not saying any of you did this, but if you see anyone doing this, report it. True story. I think that that'd be objectively hilarious, but I can't imagine myself sitting there straight faced in a safety brief while the lieutenant colonel's just like, someone's out here, just in the streets. We gotta find him. And he's just sitting there with his hood up, just like, they'll never know. Yeah. That's all the time we have for today. By the way, this is my brother, Stuart. He was also in the Marines from 2014 to 2018, got mm -hmm. out. Um, he's just visiting me for the week. So I figured while we were here, we could make some videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a funny story, like a funny military, Military story of any kind, give us your stories of funny things that happen in the military in the comments below, and then we'll make another video of this based off of those comments, and we'll read them all off so that way everybody can see them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.